Let's take a look at a simple offsetting technique to make your looping animations much more appealing. Tip -tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today we're taking a look at a very simple offset technique to make your short looping animations more appealing, basically hiding the point at which the animation actually loops. You can download this file to follow along with the tutorial and see the completely finished product by going to tiptart.xyz and clicking on the resources button, you'll be able to download it from there. Let's get started. So let me take you briefly through what's happening in this file. We have a complete two second loop, as you can see via this um, timeline that I've drawn on the stage here. Uh, every time the blue dot moves, it just represents two frames. And essentially what I've done is break the loops up into different amounts of frames. For example, each of the flames loops every 11 frames, meaning we get four of the loops in the entire two seconds, whereas the face actually loops over the entire two seconds of the animation. So already we've got two separate amounts of loops within our overall loop. Now, if the flames themselves took 48 frames to loop, that would be fine. Um, but you clearly see the point where the flames do loop. So what we've also done is duplicate and offset those flames a little bit so that they are sort of flipped the other way. And then we've added a little bit of wiggle to them as well. And don't worry, we'll get through all of this in the next section of the tutorial. I'm just giving you an overview at the moment. So we have flames that loop every 11 frames and a face that loops every 48 frames. There's some additional stuff going on, which is these additional little pieces of uh, visual effects happening here. All the little bits of flame just flicking and licking off of the main body. These are very sporadic and actually loop over the first frame of the animation. For example, that first piece of flame effect there takes... 21 frames to finish animating from birth to death. The next takes place a little bit later and a little bit shorter, as you can see up on the top right there, we're measuring the um, flame section. The next little lick of flame starts slightly later on, on frame 29, and moves all the way through to frame 39. The final piece of flame takes place on frame 41, but I went back and added the little effect of flame starting on the first few frames as well. Frames one, three and five. Oh no, sorry, just frames one and three. So it starts on frame 41 and extends past that to frame three, which helps stop that looping moment by blending the two uh, start and end frames together. So we'll just indicate that with a few dots there. So here we now have one set of loops on 11 frames, one set of loops on 48 frames, and another set of loops sporadically throughout the entire 48 frames. Uh, the only other thing is the flicker of the shadow on the logs. And this I also set to be 11 frames in length, looping at the same time as the flames did. So this makes sense because obviously the flames movements are dictating the shadow. So we've actually got three different lengths of loop within this 48 frame animation. Now, I'll just highlight where each of these start and stop with these big green dots here so that it's easy to see what's going on. What we'll take a look at in the next step is how I actually built these up and some little techniques to animate this, but you should be able to see that when you download the file anyway. So here's the finished animation and the green dots when each of the frames loops start and stop. As you can see, the little bit of sporadic nature makes it much more of an appealing loop. So let's take a look at the finished product. And now let's learn how we actually made it. So we're just starting here with a single layer with our face and logs on because that's not going to be moving too much. And on the layer above, I'm just going to draw a big old sine wave. This is a technique that I learned from a Ben Marriott video and it's brilliant. So go and check him out. Uh, just place this at the bottom of your logs so that the line that goes up represents the flames path. Create a new keyframe a little bit later on, in this case one second, and just move that sine wave up and then shape tween between the two. I then extended it so that it's a full second of animation and just converted it to keyframe every other frame. Then on a new layer above, we needed a sort of circle for the base of our flame. So we'll just draw that in uh, to act as basically a guide so that our flame doesn't lose mass, essentially. So we'll just give him a little body. 
which we just pop over his face like so. Once you've got that body on its own layer, you can start animating the flame on the layer above. So just give yourself a new brush color. I think I went for a blue here. And follow the shape of the body and choose a height for your flame and align that height to the tip of the sine wave, following the shape of the sine wave's curve with the other side of the flame. Once you've done that, you just need to copy that to the last frame in your animation. This gives us our perfect loop because our first frame and our last frame are exactly the same. Now you can go into the middle of your animation. So in this case, it would be frame 13. Uh, let's just trim down our onion skin here so it's less distracting. And you want to draw the direct opposite. And again, you're just following the shape of the sine wave as it moves upwards, the curve now on the opposite side of the flame. So now we have our starting position, our exact middle of our animation and the exact end of our animation. So we can delete the sine wave. You could go through and just um, keep drawing according to the sine wave, but um, I found myself doing that and it became too rigid. So I made mine a bit more fluid by deleting the sine wave and just using a normal onion skin. Going exactly between each keyframe now, so on frame seven here, for example, I just did some frame by frame animation, really simple stuff. Um, we just draw in between the two keyframes on our onion skin to create that kind of perfect in between. It doesn't have to be too spot on because obviously this is like a living liquid flame. And then each time um, I'd finished one, I just went to the next keyframes, created empty keyframes in between them, and then did the same thing. Here, where there were two keyframes between each previous keyframe, I just lent more towards either the previous or the next, depending on where it was. So frame five here was obviously closer to the shape of frame seven, and frame three was obviously closer to the shape of frame one. And then you just go through and do that for the rest of the flame's movements. So let's just whip through that quite quickly then. The next step after this is to add a little bit of variation to your animation. So what I actually did was turn this animation into a symbol. That allowed me to add extra rotation without affecting the frame by frame. So simply, I just selected the entire layer once I was happy with the animation. Right click the layers panel and choose convert layers to symbol. This takes all of the frames that you've made, pops them inside a symbol, which we make sure is a graphic, of course, and is a new feature to 2021, which is fantastic. So then it was just a case of copying and pasting a couple of the same flames and moving their anchor points down. Just rotated them, scaled them down a bit and eventually flipped them horizontally so that the flame faces the other way. This way we've done one piece of animation for three separate flames. Now, this is going to look fairly uh, like similar because it's uh, animating at the same rate and starting on the same frame. So what we do once we have created all three of our necessary copies is we can just offset the starting point of the flames animation and use that to simulate the effect that they're different flames. So here at the moment, they start and end all at the same time. So what we do is just go over to our looping options. We take the first frame and make it start halfway through the loop. Do the same thing on the other frame, but make it start halfway through the loop. Now we have our frames animating at different rates, but the loop still works. Go back inside our flame animation here and just remove that last duplicate frame because that's the copy of the first frame, which we don't need anymore. And now we've got some looping flames that start at different points, but have the same perfect loop. So we create a little bit more visual interest. Let's turn on looping and watch it over and over again. There, that's looking much nicer already. Of course, at the moment, two of our frames are starting at the same point. So we'll just change the smallest one to start, say at frame 19, which allows all three of the flames to start at different points. But because we have a perfect loop, they still loop seamlessly. This creates much more visual interest and looks so much better already. All just by offsetting the first frame of the loop. So let's add a bit more visual interest by selecting all of our symbols, right clicking and choosing distribute to layers. This pops all of them on their own layer. What we can do now is add a new keyframe at the end of our loop and a new keyframe in the middle of our loop and just go through and just edit the rotation of each of the flames individually. So just tweak it just a little bit, move it over a touch, do the same for the top and the same for the right hand side, bringing them in different directions and then just create a nice classic tween, very simple to create an extra bit of wiggle on our frames there. Let's say how that looks. 
brilliant. Adds a lot more of that flickering motion to the flames. And again, all this with one piece of frame by frame animation, which is great for us because it saves us a lot of time. So the next step is to animate the face. So let's take that face and cut it. Let's pop it on its own layer on top. Just paste it in place. Now we want this to be a full two second loop and we don't want the blinks to happen at any point where our other frames finish their loops either. So instead what we'll do is I'll create a few keyframes on six, eight and 10 and I will create the blink on frame six, the overshoot of the blink on frame eight and the return to normal on the blink on frame 10. So here we have, for example, the eyes closing on frame eight and I'll just redraw the mouth as well. Oops, let's get it correct this time. Perfect. And we'll give him a little eyelids as well. So now we have him blinking. Let's move that back a bit. Let's do eight, 10 and 12. So frame eight, he blinks. Frame 10, his eyes open wider than they are in frames uh, one through seven and 12 onwards. This creates a nice little bouncing animation to his blink. So frame eight, his eyes close. Frame 10, his eyes open wider. And frame 12, his eyes go back to standard. Let's take a look at that. Just trim off those end frames. So we have this blink. But as you can see, if it blinks in the middle, you can see that it's where the loop happens. It's just not mm, like... It's not attractive enough. It's not appealing enough. Okay. So let's duplicate all of our frames just by holding Alt and dragging them. And now we have a full two second loop as opposed to the one second loop before. Now that allows us to duplicate our face blink frames, extend the rest of the static frame to the end of the two second loop. And now we have a blink that is slightly better. Let's extend the loop as well all the way up to two frames to two seconds. So now we have two blinks that are closer together and a period of static you know, uh, animation for the other sides of the loop. Already you can tell this creates a much more seamless loop because it's harder to see. Let's just convert that layer to a symbol again, just so that we can animate a bit more easily and keep our timeline neat. So the last step is to animate the wiggle on the face. Again, let's do this on a two second loop, keyframing at zero frames, 24 frames and 48 frames. Just rotate his face a little bit and do a normal classic tween. I'll also go to the easing and add a simple ease in and out so that he just rocks his face back and forth as well. Whilst this does allow you to see the beginning of the loop, it's hard to tell where the loop starts because of the flames acting so sporadically. So yes, he rocks his face back and forth, left and right, but there's no clear point if you don't look at the timeline where the start of the animation is because we've offset everything, which is fantastic. Okay, great. Let's add some completely sporadic animation. I'll pop a new layer on top and give myself a few keyframes to work with on every odd numbered frame. And we'll just draw in these extra little licks of flames. For this, I'm working straight ahead, which means just drawing the first frame and just moving one frame onwards naturally every keyframe. This allows us to create a really natural and unlooping, you know, feeling animation um, while still working quickly and easily. I just move forward until the flame gets too small and then I just make it disappear. So we can see there our first bit of flame propping off, which is great. Then you just move on to the next keyframe. I'm just going to slow it down a little bit first though here because I feel like that moves just a little bit too quickly for me. So I'll just add in some extra frames in between here just by adding new keyframes and then deleting the contents, which slows that animation down by half and allows me to draw in-betweens between those previous keyframes that I made. Just doing this very quickly and roughly. I just felt like that flame popped off a little bit too quickly. So I want it to be more of a calm campfire than a raging inferno, which just moves a bit too quick. So let's take a look at that. Much better speed. Just drawing them on a wavy line as well, so they rock back and forth with the flames, which is great. So let's move on. Let's do the next piece of effects flame now. So continuing with this idea of offsetting and overlapping animation, we won't go to the end of the first effects flame. We'll instead go to frame 14 or 15 and start that animation there. So it starts to overlap the previous flame just a little bit. So we'll continue on a few more frames into the uh, second half of the loop. Just drag that over there so we can see more easily what's going on. Remove those extra frames. 
So you can see now two sparks coming off the fire and they're starting so sporadically that the loop is very difficult to see. Flame one, flame two. Let's continue forward this time at the end of the second flame coming off. We will just start a new flame up here on the right and visually jumping left and right on either side of the flame helps with that looping as well because your eye is constantly moving either side to catch the motion. So you're less likely to see the loop. So just a short burst there. And now it's coming to the part where we're looping back to the beginning. So on our first frame of our animation, we had a flame that started down the bottom. So here I will have a frame that exists on frame 47. And then back on frame one, I'll just draw a few extra bits of flame so that the loop goes from the end of the two second loop back to the beginning. And that helps us uh, sort of disguise the start of the loop as well, because there's a little bit of animation that overlaps, which looks pretty great. A neat trick for testing you know, whether your loop looks seamless or not is just to press F4 to collapse all of your panels so you can't see the timeline and see if you can't tell yourself where the start of the loop is. Personally here, I can't really tell at all, which is exactly what we were going for. So the final step then is just to add a bit of a flickering shadow on the logs. We'll just do that with a simple um, 11 frame loop because that is the same amount of time as the flames flick back and forth. So having the same loop in this instance is actually beneficial because the flames are casting the shadow or casting what would end up being glow rather than shadow actually. For this, I'm just drawing lines that go back and forth on the logs just a little bit and um, just making sure that when they do move, they're not moving too much each time because it can be quite distracting. So just going straight ahead, doing a very simple loop for 11 frames, just dancing those lines back and forth on the logs. Let's remove those. Convert the layers to a symbol and extend. See here, they're moving way too quickly and that's because I didn't actually make it 11, flame, 11 frames long. So just gonna space out those frames there, remove off that last one and add in some keyframes between them. Remove that one to make it good. So now we have keyframes on frames uh, one, three, five, seven, nine and 11, which is the exact loop of the flames there. You can see me just working things out. What I've also done is pop the copy of the first frame on frame 12 so that for my onion skin, when we move on to that section now, we can see the original position and make sure that it loops seamlessly between the two. And then we can just remove that keyframe when we're done. Oops, that loop is on two frames. We'll just turn that loop off. Perfect. You can see the now the shadow or the, or the glow rocking back and forth. So let's look at our entire animation. So there you have it back where we started. We have our original looping animation with this animation guide here. And as you can tell, without the guide, it's pretty hard to see where this actually starts or stops looping, which is great. So the rest of this, I just colored it in very quickly, which I'll show you in time-lapse mode. I brought it into After Effects where I added some glowing onto the um, flames with a plugin called Deep Glow, which just generates a very nice glowing effect. And then that was it, gave him a background and a little bit of light around the base of the flame. And there you go. So hopefully you found this useful, just taking away this idea of offsetting your loop points within a larger loop to create a sense of sort of ambig ambiguity about where the loop actually starts and stops. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, let me know again if you do like this new style of tutorial where I kind of narrate work that I've done previously. Um, I definitely won't be abandoning the old style of tutorial where it's, you know, absolutely step by step the entire process. Uh, I'm just mixing up, trying to experiment a little bit, see if this works better for the channel. Thank you very much. I love you all. And I'll see you next time on another episode of Tip Top. Absolutely massive thank you to my level two and above members. WN62, Ian Costello, Rob V, Jason Carlruddy, MP, Dima Zuev, Volafers, Melem Hoover, Two Steps to Chill, Josh Colon, Ursula Fermanska, The Sorcier, Lali Lulelo X, Andrew Hammond, Jenna Carey, Jobs Animation, Sergio De Gallardo, Ralika M, Narain Abdilla, Barbara Resna, Lone Wolf 16, Era D, Political Psychology, Maybe Sharma, and Cross. You guys are fucking lovely. Thank you ever so much for being Tip Titans. You make my day. If you'd like to join the Tip Tut Zone yourself and become a Tip Titan, just click that join button below. Subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.